Welcome to Outside Ourselves. I am your host, Kelsey Kumbera, and this is a recap uh, where I am going to share a few of my thoughts on the most recent episode of Outside Ourselves. This one was on death and dying with Ken Jones. So here are my three biggest takeaways. The first thing that I really loved about this conversation with Ken was just how practical it was. I think that sometimes, um, maybe even oftentimes, Christians uh, are accused of not being very practical when it comes to matters of death, what an actual death looks like and what needs to be done. Um, and I think that that's, there, there's probably some validity to, to that accusation. Um, I love that Ken talks all about what we need to do to prepare for our death. He's taking a note right out of Luther's book in this respect. Um, But for Ken, preparing for death, getting ready for uh, your your deathbed and getting your affairs in order is not a a means of self-justification. It's not a means of trying to uh, hurry and, and gain as much righteousness as you can in your last days. Instead, it's a matter of serving and loving your neighbor, loving those closest to you so that when you are gone, they can grieve well, they can, um, they can be comforted in grief, and that they cannot have all of these loose ends hanging over their head. Love that he left us with a little bit of that advice as well as, of course, um, standing firmly on the foundation that is given to us in the promises of God. Secondly, I um, really enjoyed the part of the con- of the interview where Ken uh, talks a little bit about just how pervasive grief is and not only grief but this really this sense of death that can um, pervade so much of our lives whether that's through actual loss of someone close to you loss of um of of who you think you're going to be or some a goal that you have have you're trying to achieve um loss in the the sense he even brought up um these deaths of people that are just not really honored or thought worthy in society and how because of that a, a lot of times if you experience that you don't feel like you can mourn properly um I think that that was such a pastoral insight there was a part of our conversation i had to cut for time but ken talks about how knowing just how much we experience loss throughout life has really impacted the way that he handles students day to day um how it makes him i think he doesn't say this exactly but how it has made him more empathetic and uh, aware of the fact that everyone, I I mean, it's the the common and cliche phrase, everyone is fighting their own battles. But but I think that underlying that that phrase, there is a lot of truth there and a lot that we can ourselves take as a, a motivation to be more empathetic and compassionate towards those around us that we are, we all have lost something. We are, um, many of us are in stages of grief and um, to treat each other kindly and gently because of that and then finally if you watch the full episode you'll see at the end that I am brought to tears by Ken's words and I've been trying to kind of think through why um, in that moment what in that moment really made me emotional Um, I think that the day that we filmed I was really hurrying to set everything up I had some sick kids at home it just felt like one of those days where I wasn't able to do enough and I hadn't done enough. And I think that Ken, in his vocation as a pastor, could probably see that. Um, and so his proclamation to me uh, and, and his reminder that um, in Christ, my identity, my resurrection identity is already here. Uh, he just really cut through, I think, what I was feeling that day to, to give me that promise and it made me feel so unburdened. We talk a lot on this show that feelings don't always necessarily equate to God's declaration of you. That is true, but I think when those two meet up, when you can actually be reassured in the gospel and you can feel it, 
um, that is something to be thankful for. And I, I definitely think that that was a moment where I myself personally felt that the benefit to interviewing pastors all the time is that I constantly am uh, being preached at. And by that, I only mean to say that I am constantly being uh, proclaimed to. I'm constantly receiving God's word for me as I am interviewing in hopes that that proclamation is also reaching your ears as um, as well. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit does what he is known to do, that he takes Ken's words in this um, episode and he creates faith in you. He grows your faith or he sustains your faith just as Ken's words, uh, which are of course based on God's word, just as those words did that for me in this episode.